Hi there, come with us as we explore the D-Day beaches in Normandy, France. We began our day at Utah Beach, the westernmost landing beach on D-Day, the 6th of June 1944, which was taken by the American soldiers. At Utah Beach, there are quite a few memorials dedicated to the brave men who came ashore here. The 101st and 82nd Airborne Divisions landed before dawn behind Utah Beach, including the men of Easy Company, made famous by the HBO series Band of Brothers. La Roosevelt Bar Brasserie is a fantastic treasure trove of history as many D-Day veterans and cast of the Band of Brothers series have left photos and signed to the walls and tables etc of this remarkable cafe. The Utah Beach Landing Museum is one of the best museums in Normandy, with the centerpiece being a B-26 bomber. Wow! As you can see here, the museum and all the different memorials are all fairly close together, so it's a wonderful place to have a wander round. The First Lieutenant Thomas Meehan Memorial 101st Airborne Memorial is a moving tribute to the crew and paratroopers on board the C-47 that crashed on D-Day. Located approximately three miles inland from Utah Beach is Brecourt Manor. On this property, Easy Company destroyed a battery of German howitzers as depicted in episode two of Band of Brothers. Check out how thick the hedgerows are. Many of the 101st and 82nd Airborne Division landed here in Saint-Amer-Eglis, a pretty village behind Utah Beach, including John Steele, whose parachute got caught on the church spire. Now, he did actually survive, but was stuck for several hours before being taken prisoner by the Germans. Later, he escaped to rejoin his unit. Still today, the town has a statue of John Steele hanging off the church spire and it's one of the most photographed spots in town. The highlight of saint mer Iglis is the enormous Airborne Museum, which has, among many other displays, awesome life-size dioramas of what it was like to be a paratrooper on D-Day.
This Road to Karen Tan is the location of the attack on Easy Company, portrayed in episode 3 of the Band of Brothers series. Point de Hoc is the cliffside location where American rangers scaled the sheer cliffs and took out their German artillery positions, saving thousands of lives on D-Day. What's unique about Point de Hoc is that it's been fairly much left exactly as it was on D-Day. Uh, you can walk around and see the bomb craters. It's quite a fascinating place to explore. The D-Day beaches in Normandy hold profound historical significance as they were the battlegrounds for one of the most pivotal moments in World War II. On the 6th of June 1944, Allied forces stormed the shores of Normandy in a massive water and beach invasion, marking the beginning of the liberation of Western Europe from Nazi occupation. The beaches of Omaha, Utah, Gold, Juno, and Sword saw tremendous bravery and sacrifice as soldiers from the Allied nations fought tirelessly to establish a foothold in Nazi-occupied France. This operation, codenamed Operation Overlord, changed the course of the war, ultimately leading to the defeat of the Nazis. The D-Day beaches now serve as hallowed ground, a solemn reminder of the courage and determination of those who fought there, and a symbol of the enduring alliance between nations in the pursuit of freedom and peace. Of the five landing beaches, it was Omaha Beach that had the greatest loss of human lives, as seen in the movie Saving Private Ryan starring Tom Hanks. Today, the beach is dotted with the remains of German bunkers, memorials, flags, and a very moving stainless steel sculpture, Les Braves, which commemorates American soldiers in the sand. Aramunches Les Bains is a small seaside town and it was part of the landing area that was used by the British on D-Day. You can still see some of the floating Mulberry Harbours located just a few hundred metres off the coast. They're actually really interesting. Above the town of Aramunches, is the Aramanches 360 Circular Cinema. This shows the 100 days of the Battle of Normandy, it gives you a great understanding of the complete battle for Normandy, not just what happened on D-Day. The Overlord Museum is fantastic and has a lot of wartime equipment to explore and also brilliant life-size street scenes set up so visitors can really quickly get an understanding of how it was. If you only have time for one museum here in Normandy, it should be this one.
the largest cemetery here, the Normandy American Cemetery and Memorial is over 172 acres and has 9,388 burial sites, honouring the American troops who died in Europe. It's an incredibly moving place and a fitting place to pay your respects to the brave soldiers that gave us freedom. Next to the cemetery is a collection of bunkers and German gun positions that you can explore and it also offers amazing views of Omaha Beach from above. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and if you have, now might be a great time to hit the like and subscribe buttons as there's much more to come. See you next time.